So, as I was making this video, I realised a few things. There are actually very few legitimately shit areas in Dark Souls games, and I wanted to leave this list for only the absolute worst, most painful areas to play, but like I said, there aren't really that many, and if we're being honest, most of the areas that could be classed as shit are from Dark Souls 2. So, to combat this, I've decided to also include the worst meh areas, so the areas that don't necessarily put you off playing the full game because of it, but instead are just so underwhelming compared to the rest of the game that overall, it does just kind of take away from the whole experience. And since doing this, it made the list much easier to assemble, and more interesting I'd say. So we all know why you're here, and it's so you can shout at me in the comments for my choices, and if you like this video, be sure to check out the other video from my picks for the best levels in Dark Souls, and even if you didn't like it, just fucking look at it anyway. P please? Also, again, before we get into it, I've decided to combine a few areas together when I was compiling the list, as otherwise places that are technically their own area, but are just notable locations that consist of one room, or, you know, that's all the shit that would fill the list. So, as an example, Belfry Sol is part of the Iron Keep for the purposes of the list. The Hunter's Workshop is part of Cathedral Ward for the purposes of this list. So, I've decided to go through each game sequentially from the game that has the least to the most like shit levels. So we're going to start with Demon Souls and realistically there isn't really much wrong with any of the Demon Souls levels. Conceptually they paved the way for all future Souls games. I mean yeah some of the levels are a little weaker than others but you know less Soulsy levels tend to make up with their overall difficulty or at least some kind of unique element to it. You know 4-2 anyone. But 1-2 doesn't do anything unique like at all. It's extremely linear, and overall pretty short as well. I mean, the dragon is kind of cool I suppose, but you know, it's already done in a previous level. Uh, you know, when compared to marvels of the series such as Latria, this level really is a bit of a letdown in my opinion. At least other levels are harder, or have better atmosphere, or are more fun, or just fucking something other than a straight line to the end. And that brings us to the end of like the the bad Demon Souls levels, there, there really isn't any, but I, I do, I genuinely have always had a problem with this particular archstone because there's just, there's nothing to it, it's fucking, it sticks out so much compared to every other Demon Souls level. So we move on to Bloodborne now, and generally, like Demon Souls, there aren't really any levels that immediately come to mind as being shit, but I have two picks here that for the most part are at the very least criminally underutilised. The first is Bergenworth. For all the build up that this area had, it really amounted to a, a very underwhelming area. You know, the drop into the lake is kind of nice, but aside from that it felt in really rushed actually. I mean, the, the, the whole like last third of Bloodborne felt rushed, but that's a different, that's a different topic. But, but anyway, you know, the choice of enemies for the place was just, ugh, fuck, fuck Jesus Christ, I'm not one for complaining about specific enemies, but when their main attack is just a grab that frenzies you, they're just like almost as bad as the fucking Winter Lanterns. At the very least, these enemies only friends you when they attack you. But, you know, instead of just fucking looking at you. Anyway, this area is only just big enough to count as its own area in my eyes as well. There really is just a criminal lack of content in this one particular part of the entire game. Especially, like I said, considering the focus on it. Now, the second area for Bloodborne is the Lecture Halls. Now this is a really strange area in the game as it straight up just doesn't really seem to need to exist. It literally seems to only serve as a... What? You know, you know I, don't, I don't actually... What the fuck does it serve as? Because like I said, it doesn't need to exist in this form. It, in before my fucking lore. That's not an excuse. Deal with it. The, the thing I don't get is why this specific structure wasn't part of Bergenworth. It, it is after all an academy and the entire area could have used an extension, of which the lecture halls could have been really good for, but instead, you know, they've separated them and it only leaves two bare bones areas in an otherwise fleshy world. It's hard to pinpoint specifically bad issues with the lecture halls, as it is such a, a basic area, and it seems to serve no purpose. And that's really it for Bloodborne. Only two levels, Bloodborne is pretty strong. But now we can move on to Dark Souls 3. Now generally, again, I think the overall quality of Dark Souls 3 levels are pretty high, but there are exceptions, and one of these is Smoldering Lake slash Demon Ruins. What a colossal drop in quality this area is from the rest of the game. Now the lake part is fine, and even the giant ballista is fine, really, 
but the demon runes is just it's just a chalice dungeon light it's so maze like and so samey with very few actual standout landmarks recycled enemies i mean why the fuck are the grues from far and keep here exactly I, I bet they couldn't even fucking tell you now if i'm being totally honest whenever i make these lists i like to be completely concrete in my reasoning for why i hate something but for smoldering lake and demon runes i, I actually don't know specifically why this level sucks so much so someone could please maybe articulate this in the comments for me but, but, uh, but otherwise I, I fucking hate this level and it clearly must come down to a lot of very subtle things all piling into one giant reason but yeah right anyway moving on we finally come to far and keep now this is a level on the list that i personally don't really even have a problem with but i know that everyone else does and i can see why I think the reason is similar to Shrine of a Mana. People hate having their mobility reduced, and you know, but coupling that with poison doesn't make for a fun time for anyone. Now, people could talk about Blight Town, technically it has the same issue, but for the most part there was a path that didn't hurt your mobility, and you didn't get poisoned either, and you could ignore a lot of the swamp area if you really wanted to. Fire and Keep doesn't grant this luxury, and if you want any of the items, well, you're trudging through toxic shit for an hour, and yeah, you'd be doing the same in Blight Town, but there are a lot more items in Fire and Keep. Not only that, you still need to light those three torches all whilst dealing with the fucking sludge and those giant stupid tree asshole things. So on one hand, I do understand, but you know, on the other hand, uh, I mean, it's character building, isn't it? Dark Souls builds characters. It's no other, it's no other way of going about it. It's, there is. So now, before we get to Dark Souls 2, because we're going to be there for a while, we'll get Dark Souls out of the way. So in the immortal words of Philip DeFranco, let's just jump into it, and we'll start with Lost Isleth. Do I honestly even really need to talk about this level? And, you know, anyone that has played Dark Souls knows this level is simply just a giant turd on an otherwise nice wedding cake. Eye splitting lava effects, absolutely, I mean, zero effort for enemy placement. Topped off with the, the fucking worst boss fight in the game and almost the entirety of the series. It's not that this level doesn't even have some interesting elements to it. You know, the, the area, the boss gate's kind of cool and, the, you know, the back entrance via the shortcut is nice. But honestly, the only real saving grace this area is that it's generally over with quite quickly. So, moving on and another end game area before a boss makes the list. And, uh, you know, for good reason. I have a few huge problems with this level, and one, it, it just feels like it was thrown together in like a few days. Now, I mean, I know I suppose this also applies to Lost Isla, but, you know, especially with this area, that, it, you know, it looks like you're slipping off to the side in some parts, and I'm not even sure if that's entirely, I mean, it must be deliberate, but you can actually fall off just by standing awkwardly. And then we have the invisible platform mechanic that is just so utterly half-baked. It just, it just looks like the level ends, but also doesn't pose any real challenge or purpose. Uh, and because of this, it really just comes off a Haha, we fooled you type thing as opposed to, you know, a genuine challenge that could have been interesting. I I would say, right, just off the top of my head, just spitballing. So I, I would say, you know, maybe some kind of puzzle where the invisible pattern of the floor changes every time. I need to like memorize it. So, you know, it, you could flash up and you could see it for like a few seconds and then you need to memorise the pattern of that. But, you know, possibly with some kind of deal of urgency as well so that, you know, it means that you need to hurry and, you know, that's kind of the, the bit that you maybe fuck up on. You know, it sounds like a much more fleshed out concept to me personally, but, I mean, I, I don't know, it's, you know, I just have really good ideas, according to everybody, apparently. So, now we move on to the Dark Souls 2 segment of this video. The overwhelming bulk of the picks are in this segment, and for good reason, honestly. A lot of the areas in Dark Souls 2 were really bad, and another lot of them were meh as fuck, and then another lot of them are just skull-crushingly awful. So, my first pick is Hades Tower of Flame. Why this area? Well, remember, it's not necessarily about an area being bad in terms of being unbearable, but as an area that can't be categorised along with the likes of King's Passage or the Hunter's Workshop, it's a truly fucking massive let- Jesus, right. Really think about this, like, think about what is in this area. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's right, fucking nothing, right? Visually, it looks amazing when you walk into it, but in reality, it's fucking four platforms and an abysmal boss. 
that it, it's just, un there's so little development to this area, considering how amazing it looks, considering the, the, there has to be something else they could have done with this, and this is the best they come up with. Really pathetic. Pick number two is Harvest Valley. Now, some of you may be wondering why I'm not including Earthen Peak. Earthen Peak is actually an okay level. It does suffer from one path is the goal, one path is the optional stuff syndrome that almost all Dark Souls levels have. But overall, it's actually quite good. Especially in Scholar. Harvest Valley, on the other hand, is mostly on this list purely because of just how much of a fucking eyesore it is. And then you get to the start of Earthen Peak uh, before the Covetous Demon and it's even... It's even more of a fucking horrendous eyesore, like they actually had to update it in Scholar because of how ugly it is. The poison mechanics are fine, and it's kind of neat how it's like sort of a battle against how quickly you can do things before your HP runs out or you get poisoned, but it's also home to one of the most infuriating, indicative of Dark Souls 2 design parts in the entire game. There's a bit of a pattern forming for these Dark Souls 2 areas, and it's clear. They're all incredibly short, linear areas with maybe a few smaller side parts leading the items, but otherwise nothing else. No other area fits this description more than the Black Gulch. Seriously, this area is so impossibly underdeveloped. Instead of just extending the gutter or something like that, they just develop a whole new aesthetic for an area that takes literally 15 fucking seconds to run from the start to the boss. It, it even has a second bonfire for some unbelievable reason. Now, okay, right, yeah, the underground area of the two giants is pretty cool, and I like how you constantly need to dodge the poison darts, but that's literally the only thing, that's the only thing, and that's it, the area is just those, that's it. And, you know, that it does not a good area make. So, Aldea's Keep. This may be a decisive area on the list, but I genuinely think there is no level more underwhelming than Aldea's Keep. It is extremely linear. Possibly the most linear of all the levels in Dark Souls 2, with literally nothing interesting about it really, aside from a, a, a tiny bit of lore and like that's it. It's, it's a fucking shame considering what we saw in the E3 demos of it, I mean it really is. The, the level is so boring and uninspired, I actually don't have anything else to say, like I, I can't criticise it for any one thing because it's just a corridor with a few enemies. In fact, it, you know, it's home to one of the most bullshit bonfires in the entire series actually. It, having a hidden bonfire behind something or whatever is fine, you know, it's something that requires critical thinking to get to, but just straight up putting it behind a hidden wall is just beyond dumb. You know, no tells or hints, no fucking nothing, it's just, oh, press X at this wall if you know. How the fuck's any- how is anyone supposed to know? Like, surely, like, game design requires some kind of hint or something, like a, a clue, but there's nothing. The only reason I knew about it is because someone fucking told me. And the award for the ugliest level goes to Memory of the Iron King. Seriously, I feel like I could have made a more attractive level if given the tools myself in a day. On top of this, it, it feels highly out of place for a Souls game. It, it feels very video gamey due to the you know the blocky design and the fact that it's just an ugly nonsensical corridor leading to a boss room where you just get bombarded with enemies purely as a way of them trying to drain you of some of your estes to make the boss artificially harder. Like there is, I am without a doubt that is the reason this part exists. And I really would have preferred it if you just got transported to the boss room and the boss is just a little bit harder. I would have preferred that, honestly, instead of having to go through the fucking gauntlet every time I have to fucking fight this boss. Now, for the purposes of just, you know, keeping a good pace with the video, I'm going to combine the next two areas into one, as they do function as essentially the same thing. One could argue that these are quite possibly the worst designed areas in the game, posing as co-op areas. The issue being that it's, to you know, it's totally possible to do it alone. It's just a colossal, gigantic, unbelievable pain in the ass. Now, surely a co-op area should involve mechanics that involve two players needing to cooperate to finish, even with NPCs. But no, they just go for the more enemies equal more difficult pish, which is technically true, but the irony that Dark Souls 2 seems to be doubling down on its design principles is really quite funny. Just fuck these areas, man. Alright, so we all knew this was going to be on the list somewhere. It's, it's inevitable. Now, you may be surprised that I personally don't find this level that bad. But I can totally see why other people would, hence why Farron keeps on the list. 
take all the problems of all the previous levels and just turn them up a notch. At the very least, the devs were considerate enough to put in two bonfires so you aren't tearing your fucking hair out, but combine low mobility with being shot at from afar and then charged at with other enemies, and you kind of see the issue. Although, you know, when did Dark Souls ever say it was supposed to be a fair game? But in my actual shitty opinion, is that the Shrine of Amania, despite its extreme linearity, offers a unique challenge in terms of environment coupled with new enemy types. Not only this, it's one of the more visually nice areas in Dark Souls 2 as well, and it has that really cool hidden shrine part of it. So, you know, really it's not so bad in my books, especially compared to other levels, but, you know, I know it's an issue for everybody else, and, I, and it's clear that people just really hate their mobility being fucked with in Dark Souls. So fin finally, we come to the, the worst. The worst of the worst. So this area, man. This fucking area. See, like, right, let's, what went through their heads when they were making this? This area could actually, as well, have been really cool if they'd made it even slightly obvious where you're supposed to go. Although, weirdly, after knowing where you're supposed to go, it seems obvious, but it's the one thing that makes this area unique compared to all the other Souls games that really makes it stand out. The deer. The fucking respawning deer. Fuck whoever thought that this was a fine, a fine concept. Fuck that person, man. It's funny how all the other infinitely respawning enemies in the games have always been things you can only take one or two hits, but not the, the oh god, these fucking deer. Anybody that's played this level knows what I'm talking about. And you, you can't even hide from them in the snow or something like that, you know, something cool that works with the snow. No, and the snow is another problem. It takes forever for it to clear out, going back and forth between just fucking white walls that you can't see where you're supposed to go at all. And then, you know, clear, oh, you can see where you need to go. God, the area, the area is gigantic as well, which is fine, but not when it's this huge, you know when it's this shit. Like, it's just, it's huge, but also a huge expanse of garbage. Like, oh my god, and the worst part, the thing that really drives the nail into the coffin is just the fact that conceptually on paper, the area kinda sounds cool, like it could have been good. But no, it is not good. It is the exact opposite of fucking good. <sighs> well, that brings me to the end of the video, and I suppose indeed this two-part series. Now, if you want me to make any other videos, leave your suggestions down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I, as I hope you enjoy all the videos that I put out. I'm gonna say a big thank you to all the patrons in Patreon who literally have kept this channel alive over the last year. A few more people have been signing up recently and it's been really appreciated, so thanks a lot you guys. Uh, yeah. So, I um, guess I'll leave you there then, and I will be seeing you in the next video. Bye.